For the past four to five years, my office and studio changed it from a corner of a room to a part of a garage. It did work, and it also proves that you don't need a big and fancy studio space to be an artist. That being said, I have always wanted my own studio space where I can work and enjoy myself. And recently, my dream came true in the form of a tiny house. So today, I want to share with you the story of this tiny house and give you a tour of it. And by the way, I made a new intro animation. Hey, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor and welcome to my new studio. Now Cafe Watercolor has a physical space. Before, I have been working at a corner of my garage and it works. I got enough space for me to paint, film and do work. Then last year the pandemic hit, I started to work from home full time. It started to become a bit tough. Even though my garage is insulated, it still get quite hot during summer and cold during the winter. Especially during the summertime, I need to have a fan full blast on my face to keep myself cool. Aside from that, the garage is also known to crawl with bugs, so I occasionally got visited by spiders and flies, especially during the summer when the garage door is open. Moreover, the garage space is also doubled as a laundry room in my home, so my family will come and do laundry while I'm working. And as you know, I have to film and record audio for my YouTube videos. So there are times when I need to do laundry, I'm also recording. I would ask my wife to just leave it at the garage and I will do it for her later after I'm done filming. So maybe that's why she always does it when I'm recording. Anyways, as you can imagine, the garage is fine as an office and studio space, but it's far from ideal. So last year, I reached out to a tiny house builder here, Seattle Tiny Homes. I talked to them about my tiny house art studio project. And the reason I want to have a tiny house is that I really want a separate space that I can enter. So it's sort of mentally and emotionally transform me into working and creative mode. It'll be a little bit harder if it's just an extension or part of the house that I'm living. And second is that I really just love the idea of a tiny house. I think it's super cute and I can customize it to fit my personal need. So the people at Seattle Tiny Homes work with me to come up with the design that fits my need. The COVID delayed everything, so I have to wait quite a bit longer than usual to get my tiny house, but it was finally finished building recently. Now the tiny house is done, the land is prepped, but there is a huge challenge because the pathway to my backyard was a bit narrow, and I had to fill the sides a little bit, but I didn't know the house would be quite tall, so when they tried to pull the house in, one of the trees is in the way. So we got a tree on one side and the roof of the house on the other side. They were really patient and slowly maneuver around it and after taking the gutter out they were finally able to pull through literally so a huge shout out to the delivery crew at seattle tiny homes they were super patient and careful so after the house is settled i've been busy moving things from my garage to the tiny house studio and now here we are this is like a dream come true not only do i have my own studio but also a self-sufficient tiny house i'm really really thankful for this place and the support i got from my family and from you because without the little success i have with this channel i likely won't get a dedicated studio it is not a big studio it is an 8 by 16 tiny house but there are quite a few unique things about it okay enough talk let's go on a tour of my new studio Okay, so here it is, my tiny house studio at a glance. And I am going to give you a tour of the place. Not a big place, but it has everything that I need. So here is my painting station. So my easel, everything still here, same palette, everything. And my setup, I will talk about my setup in other videos. There's a lot to go through. But what you can see is that I set up my camera and everything here so that I can record my video. And as you can see, there is a huge wooden beam that I asked them to install because I need to attach all of my camera equipments and also an additional lighting. I have an iPad attachment here so I can look at the reference that I'm painting. And this 
painting is by a wonderful Brazilian artist, watercolor artist, Marcos Bucari. He is an amazing artist here. And this is a digital work from my good friend and also a really good concept artist, Darren Bacon. Had a really fun art with the Cybertruck. The lighting right now is really nice. I got this afternoon lighting and the shadow of the tree casting on the frosted window. It's really beautiful. I installed this screen myself just so that I can sometimes open the window and let the air flow through up here. And I'm pretty sure you can recognize who this is by. This is a small painting from Joseph's Bookvich. I have two more of his painting in my home, but this one I really like. So I like to just put it right up where I'm painting so I can take a look at it and inspire by it. And here we have a painting by Andy Evenson. And up there is my own painting and I will show you the other painting when I get up there. Down here is my computer where I do my work and edit video and everything. I got two computer because one is my personal computer right here. And the other one that's the computer is sent there from my day job from my studio. So I'm also work at home full time. So I got two computers. So I switch them around. I have a kind of like a USB switch down here. So I only need to use one pair of mouse and keyboard to switch between computers. But this is my personal computer right now where I'm doing my work. And this is my coffee station where I make my espresso during the morning. Now that I have a separate dedicated space, I don't need to worry about grinding coffee and making noise early in the morning that will wake people up. I can come here and start to make my own coffee and start my day. And very, very nice. I got this rack install myself, hanging my coffee. This is almost kind of like a ritualistic area. Look how nice this is. I'm so happy about this space. Okay, so this beautiful portrait and this awesome painting is done by the same artist, Nick Runge. Okay, that's his signature right there. So I got this small painting and I think it's perfect for this space. So I just put it up here and like just like the simplicity and expression on the portrait. And it almost feels like she is melting the coffee and feeling pretty good. So, okay, so over here, my guitar, I pick it up and play sometime and some of one of my action figure and some books. And here I got a sign. We see open, but outside is as close. So the reason I have that is that I will let my family and people know that if I'm available or not. Okay, right now I'm filming, so they see close, so they won't come knocking on the door. But when I flip it open, it means that people can come in, drop in, have a drink, and kids can come in and have a little bit of fun. And yeah, so this is a good way to let them know if I'm available or not. And over here is underneath the stair, quite a bit of storage. So here I have some of my action figure, my toys, stuff that I like. I already get rid of a lot of it because it's just simply not enough space, but some fun stuff. And here is some of my book. And here is something very, very special. My friend gave me this uh, Bob Ross Funko Pop figure about two years ago. After I moved everything here, I got this tiny little easel from the art store and I did this tiny painting, actually referencing from one of Bob Ross painting. So I just thought I'd do that and match the figure. Turns out pretty nice and cute. I really like it. And down here, some more book and there's a microwave. So when I'm hungry, I can actually get some stuff to eat. Here I store my paintings here and some painting equipments and so on. Here also some paintings and papers. So I'm really glad I actually have a good place to store all of my papers and painting before I kind of have to find a place to put them. Now I have a good place to fit all my paper in. Also underneath here, there's a little fridge here. And right now it's mostly just milk that I need to use for latte. 
but it's nice that I can store some food in there in case I'm hungry. And they did a pretty good job in the storage. They're all soft clothes. So coming in here through this pocket door, it is the bathroom. So it's quite nice because right? there's trees all around. It's actually quite private. So this is a composting toilet and it's actually pretty good. I use a few times and this way I don't need to hook up sewer because if I just washing my hand and stuff, I can just have it dump on my backyard and it's fine. It's just a little bit amount of water. But for a toilet, I actually just want to set up a composting toilet. And, you know, a lot of time I would just go into my main house and go on my business. But sometimes if I just really don't want to leave, I can use this composting toilet. It's really fine. And right here, this couple of rock, I picked them up from the Cannon Beach. I saw these rocks are very nice, very beautiful. So I pick up a few of it. My razor blade is here because I usually remember to shave right before I'm filming my video. So that's why I just put it here because I'm filming here anyways. Shower, I haven't been using it. So it's a small bathroom and a small sink, but it's sufficient, it's quite nice. Okay, coming back here and as we go up to the stair. So one thing that I really want is to have a little sitting area. I put a cushion here so people can sit on here. And my wife was just here. She was sitting on here and having a drink. So this is something I really want. So I work with them. This is a very high first step, but I insist to do that because I want a good sitting area. However, the people in Seattle Tiny Homes, they are really, really nice. So they made this extra stool. So this allowed me to actually create the first step to go up to the stair. So it's very nice of him. I didn't ask him to do this because I thought I can just sit on this and they just can go up like that. But they create this nice little first step. So this is actually quite nice. And when I'm sitting down, I can actually put my feet here quite comfortable. So it's going up. Of course, my 100,000 subscriber YouTube play button has to be here, proudly display. And again, I have you to thank for that. And eventually, if that ever happened, if I reach ever reach like a million subscriber, I'll probably put it here if that would ever happen. But of course, my Cafe Watercolor logo, I just put it right here. And let's go up there to the loft. So going up to the loft, and you can see it's actually a very nice space, but this is pretty small. So when I go through this, I actually have to kind of crawl in. So that's why I got a Japanese tatami on it. So it's going to be a little bit easier for my knees. So here is the loft. Again, that painting is by me. One of my favorite painting this past two years, I think. And I put a camper bed roll on here so I can take a nap here when I'm feeling tired or sometimes when I work pretty late, I will camp out here at night. This beautiful, beautiful painting is by Nick Elm, another Nick. He is a Swedish artist. So if you see some similarity between his watercolor work and Ender Zorin's work, you're right. They are from the same place. Very, very beautiful painting. That's why I kind of display a high up here. Here's a bing bag so I can sit here and read a book and enjoy stuff. Okay, and this is what I'm looking at when I am sitting on this bing bag. So this is the view. This is really, really nice. I asked them to put a skylight here so that I can look at it when I am just chilling up here with my bing bag and when I'm taking the afternoon nap. And at night, if I turn everything off, if I turn all the light off, you actually see some stars. It's really, really nice. Okay, so this is the view up here. Okay, there's a ni nice LED light. But up here, you can see all the cables 
that's hitting up here. So they are very, very nice. When they make this wooden beam, they actually make it so that I can kind of hide my cable underneath it. I also tuck a light up there. So at night, there's a little bit of light up there when I don't want everything really bright. Okay, so one thing that they did very, very nicely is that they actually make a custom desk for me. So everything you see up on the desk right now is on their custom desk. So what's so cool about this desk is that there is a little bit of a interesting feature on this. So they make a small compartment here where I can put all my paint in here. And when I don't use it, I can just kind of close that and it will be a nice space to put my brush and stuff on it. But aside from that, they designed the desk in the way that there is some gap behind it. So it's very, very nice for cable management because I have quite a bit of cables back there. As you can see back there, there's a lot of cables. I mean, you can imagine with two computers and all this filming equipments, I have to find a way to manage all of the cables so I can run through the back of the desk that they made and I can run just all the cable down there so I can just leave the mess behind the desk so that I can get a lot of the cable management out of it. So this wonderful, wonderful custom desk, I'm really thankful for the work Seattle Tiny Homes has done for that. Okay, so that's it for my tiny house studio. Again, not a really big space, but it's a personal space that I really enjoy being here. And it's in my backyard and my backyard is full of the trees around the neighborhood. So it's got quite a bit of privacy actually, and almost feel like a tree house because it's surrounded by a bunch of trees. So I hope you enjoy this little tour. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour of my new studio space. Hopefully this place will last me for a very long time. Again, I'm so grateful for this place and I'm really looking forward to creating more content here in this place. I also have some exciting new things coming up for Cafe Watercolor. I just need to find time to do them all. I am also planning to do a video of my video setup. I have quite a few people asking me about the equipment that I'm using, so I am sure there are many people interested in that as well. If you're new here to this channel, welcome. Please consider giving a like and subscribe, ring the bell icon so you will get notification for my new video. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. I'm going to make some coffee for myself and I'll see you again very soon.